Welcome to the Raleigh Regional. Four teams enter, only one team exits victorious. Will it be NC State? You are Locked On Wolfpack, your daily podcast on the NC State Wolfpack, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Wolfpack Nation? It's time to get locked in with Locked On. Thanks for making Locked On Wolfpack your first listen each and every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Happy Friday to all. As always, I'm Grayson Boone, joined by former Wolfpack defensive tackle Kenton Gibbs. The Raleigh Regional and the NCAA baseball tournament kicks off on Friday for the first time since 2018. NC State is hosting their own regional at the Doke. They welcome South Carolina, James Madison, and Bryant here on Friday. James Madison and South Carolina are the two and three seed. They will begin things at 2 p.m. on Friday, and then NC State will take on the fourth seed in Bryant, 7 p.m. Friday night. Kenton, I saw on Thursday that Coach Elliot Avent announced that Sam Highfill, the senior starting pitcher, perhaps yeah. our eighth of this rotation, will be throwing Friday night against Bryant. Do you think that this is the right move? Does this surprise you? What are your thoughts here? You know, you're the local baseball expert here, so I'm not going to pretend to have knowledge on how this rotation should go in a normal situation and, and how this deviates from that. But what I will say is this. I have urged time and time again, win as many as you can whenever you can, and that's definitely the case in tournament time. Like, this is not the time to say, oh, well, we can sacrifice this game and make our way through the – because it is double elimination, correct, the uh, the the NCAA tournament. So this is not the time to say, well, we can go ahead and kind of bum our way through this one and figure it out on the back end through the loser's bracket. No, 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 my friend. You need to get as many wins as you can wherever you can. And if you believe, hey, Sam Highfield will get us over the hump against Brian, or maybe Sam Highfield will help us destroy Brian to the point where, you know, we might not need him, but it's just good to have him just in case. Good. Try them out there anyway, because I see it like this. If you make that decision to say, let's save them, and then all of a sudden you have a day where your bats just, you know, don't get it done. However, you put out a pitcher that's not the guy who knows what can happen. Who knows? You know, they could get a bunch of weak contact just constantly in the gaps. And next thing you know, it's like, did we just lose to the Bulldogs? Because we didn't put our best stuff out there. So again, you know, maybe I'm again, maybe my football mentality is bad for baseball in the regular season, but it's the postseason now. Win as much as you can, whenever you can. I, I don't know when that changed about the postseason. No, your your knowledge very easily translates here. And you're right. Leading up to this decision being announced on Thursday, me personally, I was thinking that Highfield would be saved for Saturday, more than likely to face South Carolina. But that's the problem. It's the postseason, and there's nothing that can be assumed in the postseason. We've said this on here several times, but the NCAA baseball postseason tournament, I do believe it is more chaotic than March Madness is for basketball. And if you don't believe me, tune in this weekend. You're going to see crazy outcomes from teams that you would have never expected them to happen for. So NC State, I think the the decision to go with Highfield, their, their perceived ace of the pitching staff, to throw him against Bryant, that is both, one, honoring your opponent. You're not saying, ah, we don't think so much of you, so we're going to throw a freshman, or we can basically just throw out there, and we can expect to beat you with our offense, and then we'll keep all of our chips in the middle and hope to play them against a better opponent. You don't want to do that in the postseason, because like Kenton mentioned there, in the event that all of a sudden you do go cold against Bryant, who has a very experienced pitching staff, might I add, they're led by, I think, like eight or nine different seniors they're going out there with nothing to lose. That type of mentality makes you dangerous. There's certainly no time to be counting your chickens. If you perceive Bryant to be a pushover, and then they all of a sudden they come out and they shock you on Friday night, you're in a world of hurt in your own regional. Because then you got to fight your way back out of the loser's bracket. And more often than not, that gives the two or the three seed all the momentum they need to put you out of your misery. And you are now out of your own regional. So 
to ensure that you are 1-0 moving into Saturday, you got to put your best foot forward. And that is what NC State and Elliott Avent is doing by throwing Sam Heifel on Friday night. But also, the other part of this, it keeps the same schedule. Sam Heifel has been the Friday night all season long. Elliott Avent very clearly believes in the system and doing everything that has gotten you to this point is what will also carry you through the postseason. That's a very real thing. And Throwing Sam on Friday, I do believe, puts NC State in the best position to advance throughout this regional. You want to get to 1-0 and on Saturday, and then you reassess your situation. Now, like I was mentioning, at first, I thought, okay, maybe you go Dom Fritton on Friday, and you keep Sam for Saturday. No shade at all here. Dom Fritton has not had the season that any of us thought that he would have. So if no, he runs no, no. Four against a Bryant team, like I – like I just told you, you're in a world of hurt, and all of a sudden, this whole regional has essentially blown up in your face. So I certainly understand the decision to go with Sam on Friday night. NC State just needs to take it to him. No funny business. Get out, get an early lead. Like Kenton was mentioning, perhaps you build up a lead so big that you can afford to pull high fill early and then bridge over to your bullpen. Maybe you save more high fill later on in that regional, but the recipe for NC State's success, this run that they've had beating so many quality ACC teams, is their, their starter gets you five to six innings, then the bullpen comes in, and they end the game effectively there. And what I mean by that is Consiglio comes in, Duden comes in, Derek Smith comes in, and the game feels over because they're not giving anything up after that. So yeah. that's the recipe for success. And Sam Highfield gives you the best chance to do that on Friday night. Having a bullpen that closes the door is a, a big deal, but more important than that, the reality is the bullpen plays less than the starter. That's just the fact of the matter here. It's it's not complicated. This isn't rocket science. So, you know, I'm not upset at all by the uh, decision to, um, you know, start high field here. And then the other two opponents here, we talked a little about it earlier this week. South Carolina is a very explosive offense. They do hit a lot of home runs but they also strike out a lot. Their pitching staff as a whole put up, I guess you could say better numbers than NC State's. The momentum has absolutely been on NC State's side. Our bullpen has put up some of the most impressive outings that you've seen anywhere in the country, especially of late. So I feel good about the bullpen there. James Madison being the three seed, they are one of the last teams that are making it into the tournament. They're a little bit of a wild card. You saw in right. 2022 when Ole Miss won the entire tournament, they were quite literally the last team. They were 64 of 64, and then they went on to win it all in Omaha. So there's no one that you can overlook. There's no one that you can count out. That includes Bryant. So, again, don't be counting your chickens. Don't assume that NC State is 1-0 after Friday night. They have to earn it every bit of the way. But like I said earlier this week, we have the team to accomplish what we're trying to this weekend. We have the offense who's consistent enough to get on base produce runs, add a little bit of power, and just stay balanced. South Carolina's offense is not as balanced as ours. James Madison's yeah. offense is not as balanced as ours. And Bryant's, of course, is not either. So there's been a lot of chatter on if the Raleigh Regional is the hardest, perhaps, of all the other ones. I think it is maybe the most balanced. But I think NC State's roster has enough talent to survive this weekend. Yeah, for sure. And, and this is all about, to me, this team and who they've shown that they can beat when they're rolling at their highest clip – this team, it truly is about how are you showing up day to day? Obviously, we know in baseball, you know, you need some lucky breaks here and there and all that. But this team has shown when they're rolling at their highest clip, who can stop? Them? But when they show up and they're not taking the series, they're not locked in. Who can they be? You know, that's because we've seen some god awful teams that didn't sniff the tournament, take them out to the woodshed. So it's about this team's countenance and how they show up in this Raleigh regional, because, again, we ain't hosted in a very, very long time. The fans are going to pack the doke out. That's going to happen. We know that. NC State fans, if you are if you all are nothing else, Wolfpack Nation, you all are passionate. And so with that being said, I know the doke's going to be packed. I know it's going to be loud and ruckus and all that good stuff. But, man, I'm telling you, it's going to be a very great time to see. There's a hype video released on the NC State Baseball Twitter page on Thursday night. And one of the lines said in that video, chaos is in our culture. And I don't know if I've heard a more accurate statement for NC State, but for all the Pack fans that are going to the Doak this weekend, live in that. I saw a yeah. lot of South Carolina fans this week try and poke fun at the Doak saying it's small. It looks like a high school field. Can only 20 people get tickets to this game? 
listen, the Doak is very behind the eight ball in terms of ACC ballparks, or I guess many ballparks across the country, SEC included. But that's where the Wolfpack fans need to step in and make the true difference. Is it a smaller ballpark relative to others? Yes, absolutely. But if the fans bring all of that energy that we know that we can, it feels a whole lot bigger. It'll sound a whole lot louder than maybe these other SEC schools will. So we got to pack the Doke. We got to light it red. Make this the most electric atmosphere that the Doke has seen in the last six years because that's the last time we hosted one of those things. So looking forward to a great weekend of NC State baseball. Again, I do think that this tournament is way more hectic than March Madness is. So if you're just now getting into college baseball, you picked one hell of a time to do it because the NCAA tournament is it is absolutely insane. And your NC State Wolfpack are a regional host, and we got to make sure that we're surviving on to the Supers. Coming up next, we're getting into Fan Friday, addressing our top comments of the week after a quick word from our sponsors. Our sponsor of today is Game Time. With killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee, Game Time takes all the guesswork out of buying tickets. If you're in the market for NBA Finals tickets, you've come to the right place. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to tip-off. Or maybe you're looking for NC State Baseball regional tickets. Best of luck, because I do believe the Doke is sold out this weekend, but if you're able to find some, Game Time's last-minute deals help you save up to 60% off buying last-minute tickets for sports, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. Their all-in pricing feature can help you toggle the total you see up front with zero surprise fees at checkout, and you can see a panoramic view from your seat in the app before you buy so you know exactly what to expect upon arrival. So take the guesswork out of buying all playoff tickets, including NBA Finals or the Rally Regional, with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONCOLLEGE for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply, and again, Create an account and use redeem code LOCKEDONCOLLEGE, L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-C-O-L-L-E-G-E, Locked On College, for $20 off your first purchase. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Middle portion of our Friday show, now time for Fan Friday, addressing our top comments of the week. Here we go. First one comes from Michael Holbrook. He says, NC State football landing in Tier 2 of EA Sports program rankings is a clear indication of the growth of NC State football in popularity and as a competitive program. I remember the NC State-Kansas State Pop-Tarts Bowl being one of the highest-rated bowl games of 2023, so EA Sports is right to have NC State football as a Tier 2 team that's on the rise to greater expectations. I'll tell you what, Michael. I kind of go back and forth on the importance of winning bowl games as sometimes you have key opt-outs and just overall the focus is not quite as big as it is in the regular season. Losing the Pop-Tart Bowl, it's starting to sting me even more as time progresses because that was undoubtedly like the bowl of bowl <clears throat> season. Outside of the CFP, of course, the right. Pop-Tart Bowl was, it had the most buzz, it had the most media attention, it had the most marketing from the Pop-Tarts team. It had so much positive attention, head and shoulders above all the others, that I do kind of wish that NC State had won the whole thing. Because every so often I see memes of Kansas State eating the live Pop-Tart. I'd be lying if I told you I wish it wasn't us. I would have killed to see Dave Doran up there eating a live Pop-Tart with a cup of bourbon. That would have been an unforgettable moment, and it would have projected NC State into further success even more than it already has. But... You're right about Tier 2 for EA Sports. We talked about the college football video game on the end of Thursday's episode. It will be so unbelievably cool to see how NC State is represented in this. You'd be surprised how big of an impact that has with the with the amount of young kids coming up playing video games all the time. And maybe NC State becomes their favorite team to use. Later on down the line, they end up attending NC State because something so small as they started following a team out of a video game. That is a very real possibility because of the impact of these type of things. So for NC State to have a high level of representation in what is supposedly supposed to be like the game of our lives, it is a very big deal. But NC State is a very popular growing brand across all sports. All the success that we've seen, not just in football, but basketball, baseball, all the other non-revenue sports, we're booming here in Raleigh now. And NC State football being the main moneymaker 
as they continue their ascension as well, it only helps everyone else. So it's awesome to see NC State becoming such a popular brand. And the more we win on the field, the more popular we get. And I, I love how you close that thing off. It's almost as if you lobbed it off the backboard to me because I have said for the longest, just win. Everything else will take care of itself. Just win. And the tiers were not picked by most viewed, least viewed. The tiers were picked by where teams were finishing in terms of the AP poll. So all you have to do is follow Al Davis and just win, baby, win, and you'll – you'll get what you want out of these tiers. So, you know, this is a grow NC State is a growing brand, but more than a growing brand, it's now turning into a winning brand. There were decades where there were no uh, ACC championships drought over. There were times where you could not count on NC State to be listed among the Georgias, the Alabamas of the world in terms of teams who had won uh, eight games or more in all these consecutive seasons. And yet here we are again, the critique of wanting a spike year is legitimate. I'm one of the biggest proponents of we need a true spike year of 10, 11, 12, maybe even 13 or 14 wins. Absolutely. I'd love to see it. But while we are not there, it is still very clear that NC State is a brand that is being more so associated with success right now than almost ever in its football program's history. This is in context of NC State's biggest offseason moment. This comes from Today Junior 44. They say, my favorite moment was hearing sweet baby Mac whine about Dave Dorn hurting his feelings after getting his ass kicked for the third straight year, topped by flipping Keenan Jackson. Yes, this is a very underrated moment that had somehow slipped my mind when we started talking about the biggest offseason moments for NC State. Hearing Mac Brown on National Signing Day, no less, get up to the podium and complain about something that Dave Dorn had said in the heat of the moment to his players in the locker room was so delicious. And if that doesn't outline the stark contrast between the culture that NC State is building and whatever you want to call the dirty foot football program over there, there was as big as a spotlight as maybe there ever has been on the differences between these two programs. And then, like you mentioned here, to top it all off, we take one of their recruits on National Signing Day. And this is also a recruit in Keenan Jackson who could just find himself making an impact as a freshman because he's an extremely talented young wide receiver. So that was an unbelievable moment in this offseason. It almost gets swept aside because of all the other buzz about the incoming transfers. But I have to say that was a very, very good moment for NC State fans. To put this very simply and plainly in in a way that most people can relate to right now, the Dirty Foot Club simply is not like us. William (laughs) is a soft man, and he's running a soft program. The worst part about it is Coach Doran and William already had the conversation where he apologized, and he said, hey, William, your program is, is, you know, you're good guys. I didn't mean it that way, William. It's just not something that I wanted to see. And yet here you are, not just the the funniest part about this today, Junior 44, great happy Gilmore reference, by the way, but the funniest part about this whole thing, not only did they already have a conversation about this in the past, but is this not what rivalries are supposed to be about? Thank you. And, And has NC State ever asked these bozos for apologies for anything that they've said Not maybe much. there's part of a history that i don't know i'll give you the the, the right away to say i'm not all-knowing omnipotent or infallible i could be wrong here a lot like i was wrong about how they were going to distribute the 20 million per school i could be wrong here but i don't remember nc state saying drake may hurt our widow feelings and we need to and 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 here's the the worst part about it all this was on their signing day This was signing day. This isn't just some random day out the blue. This is your day for you to talk about all the amazing players you're adding to your team. And you get up there butthurt about something you already had a a conversation about. That's a real William thing to do, William. That's a very William thing to do. You ought to be a damn shame to yourself. Next one here comes from Toast803. They say, really excited about football this year. It's not just the players. But NC State has an OC in Robert and I, 
that can use these weapons effectively to create confusion. Look at what he was able to do last year, the adjustments to his personnel. Much like a defense reliant on you not knowing what we're bringing in from where, the offense will have the same ability because of these gets. Just don't overly rely on a weave in the backfield. A lot of our conversations this week have been revolving around the potential impact of the offense and the importance of all these new pieces coming together under Robert and I. And it kind of speaks to a bigger point of, I'm not sure Robert and I got enough credit. We tried to give him as much credit as we possibly could on here. Yeah. And I don't yeah. know if he gets enough credit for everything that he did accomplish last year with Brennan Armstrong, a struggling O-line, an extremely struggling wide receiving core. The running back stable was not so effective much of the year, and yet we finished with nine wins on the season. Now, the defense has a lot to do with that as well, but the the way that Robert and I was able to utilize Armstrong and continually get the ball into the hands of KC, even when the other team knew where the ball had to go for mm -hmm. NC State to score points, we still found ways to do it. Robert and I is an offensive genius. I hope I hope folks truly understand that because don't be surprised when we're lighting up the scoreboard this year because now we have all the pieces we could have dreamed of on the offensive end. So when this offense is humming and we're putting up gaudy numbers, just remember who's behind the curtain pulling all the strings. It's Robert and I. I agree with everything that you said here because the most important thing is the last line. Just don't overly just don't overly rely on a weave in the backfield. Here's why I say that. It's like at Tennessee when Arian Foster had to split carries with two guys who went on to become accountants because like, oh, that's how we always do it under Fulmer. Equal right. touches for everybody. And it's like, no, no, there is a guy that is head and shoulders above everybody else. He needs those touches. I would love to see guys that I feel like are on the pay are on pace with a third team all ACC performer in Jordan Waters. I'd love to see it. But with that being said, I'm not going to hold my breath for Smothers, Raphael, and company to be good enough to demand a, a split there that's, that's quote-unquote equitable or that is somewhat even. No, nah, you got to earn it. You've got to be a guy that's worthy of getting those touches because, again, Jordan Waters is, you know, his contact balance and, and his ability to be patient and hit what develops is special. It's downright special. So with that being said, if you can't match that amount of special or do bring something of your own that's special and different, that I would say, hey, you can do that at an all ACC level. Why would we split it? Why would we rely on the weave? You know, but I, everything else, again, I agree with a thousand percent. I think Anai is an amazing offensive coordinator and you've given him more weapons than before. Before, he had to be Tony Stark in a cave, right? Where where he's yeah. uh, deconstructing the Jericho to build his suit. Now you've got him in his lab. You got Jarvis with him. You got all the things he could ever need to build the best suit possible. Tony Stark in the cave describing the 2023 offense. That is about what Robert and I had to do. He had to make something out of nothing. And that something got us to nine wins. I, I, I truly hope that that does not go understated. Last one here comes from Shanerman29. They say the defense is trying to guard KC, Justin Jolie, and then add in Jordan Waters, Noah Rogers, Wesley Grimes, Jonathan Paler, and Terrell Anderson. That's a defense's nightmare. And guess what? You're still forgetting Keenan Jackson, Juice Farine, Dakari Collins, possibly Duke Scott, possibly Hollywood Smothers, Kendrick Raphael. We have so many weapons. It's... It's become increasingly easy to forget one or two of them. I don't know yeah. if we've ever had this type of problem for NC State's offense. And I say problem, it's not even a problem. It's like the best possible issue you can have. I'm obviously not comparing us to an Alabama, but to a certain extent, this has to be what they feel like every year. They have so many four and five star dudes on their roster that at times they don't even know what to do with them all. If NC State continues on that type of trajectory, you will see 10 wins nearly every season. You will see this team challenge for the CFP nearly every single season. You want to bring in as much talent as you possibly can and then have the best of that rise to the top. So we have a whole lot of dogs in our doghouse on offense here, and I cannot wait to see what Robert and I can do with it because I have zero clue how you're going to guard us when we have this amount of firepower at our disposal. And then you have 
a veteran quarterback in Grayson McCall, who's been a leader. He's, he's played plenty of college football. He's experienced and he's extremely talented to lead us to wherever we're trying to get to this year. So this is like, this is like the NC state offense of my lifetime. I don't know if there's ever, ever been this amount of buzz about an NC state offense since I've been breathing air on this earth. So we've talked some about the video game numbers. They might be putting up video game numbers in real life with the amount of firepower we have now. I mean, Hey, in the words of, of a very important rapper to the scene right now, how many weapons you really got? I mean, there's too many options. This is, (laughs) you just have weapons on weapons on weapons. This is something that you absolutely love to see. And again, great. I can't say it better than Grayson said it. You are going from day to night. I mean, a complete 180 virtually from last year in terms of you had very specific guys, specific situations that could do things to anybody, anywhere, anytime. It can go down. You know, it, it's great to see. And rounding out our Friday episode, we got more men's basketball scheduling news on Thursday. The Packer headed to San Diego this November. More on this after a quick word from our sponsors. Last couple of minutes here on Friday, closing this out with some men's basketball scheduling news. We got another non-conference tournament to look forward to, and it's this fall instead of in 2025. NC State will be heading to the Rady's Children's Invitational in San Diego this November. The other three opponents in this tournament, Purdue, BYU, and Old Miss. And if all three of those sound familiar, it's because we played all three of them this past season. Now, unfortunately, we also lost to all three of them this past season, but all of these teams will look different coming into this year. We've retooled our roster. Zach Eady and others have moved on for Purdue. They're not the same Final Four team that they just were. BYU, obviously, their coach left for Kentucky. They're going to have a brand new roster. No idea what they'll look like quite yet. Old Miss, eh, they might be more or less the same team. Most of Chris Beard's teams always improve from year to year, so I'd anticipate them being a little bit better than they were last year. Kenton, who are you looking forward to potentially playing the most out of these three teams here? Our trio. Get back <laughs> gang is here. This is, as the kids like to say, this is, this is when you need to spin the block, get on a little bit of demon time, because you need to show and make a statement that last year was not a fluke. As a matter of fact, Make the statement that last year was a fluke in terms of the regular season, because you and I talked about how it seemed at multiple points like, hey, they should get it together. They should get it together. And it just wasn't happening. So I I'm looking for all of them. I want all of them. Yeah, I I love this energy from Kevin Keats. And you make it to a final four. You win an ACC championship. You retool your roster. And then you're looking around at other P4 schools that you went down to last year. Hey. Come back here. We we want you yeah. again. Let's yeah. run this back again. Mm-hmm. I love the fact that it's three familiar opponents from this last year. And then the, the other thing that we've been talking about a lot on here, it's just another humongous win for the program. Another early season tournament that speaks to all of this recent success, getting back on the map of college basketball. This is yet another byproduct of this postseason success. So being a part of another relevant tournament so early in the season This means the program is continuing to go up. This is a win for Keats. It's a win for the program. And I love that we're facing these P4 opponents so early in the season. I believe this is the last weekend of November. So you got to know what you have pretty quickly on. Or in the event that you don't have it all figured out, if you go down to one of these teams in perhaps embarrassing fashion, just so to speak, you find out pretty quickly what you do need to have moving forward. But In terms of NC State playing these higher profile teams so early in the season, I there's always there's always the feeling online that we're like, ah, we're not ready for this. I I think we're gonna get embarrassed on a national spotlight. We never really do. The times that we've played Kansas early on, or maybe it's in Arizona or somebody else of higher caliber, we're usually always in the game. And I mean, just a couple of years ago is the Thanksgiving tournament down uh, in Atlantis. Arizona at the time was number two in the country and we went down there and beat them. NC state is typically pretty competitive in these early season tournaments. So I'm, uh, I'm anxious to see what we can do the second time around against these three foes that we lost to this year. That'll do it for us here on Friday. Another good week. We're locked on Wolfpack looking forward to an insane weekend of NC state baseball, looking forward to the pack coming out on top. 
Be sure to hit that like button. Drop your comments in the comment box. I'll be sure to get to each and every one of those. And if you have not already, mash that subscribe button. As the calendar turns into June, I'll be sure to put out some tweets and community notes about this. This channel, Locked on Wolfpack, uh, this is consistent across all Locked on College channels. We'll be rolling into three days a week instead of our regular five. So if you have a preference of what days you'd like to receive co content from us, we'll take that into consideration. And then over this weekend, we'll announce what three days that we'll be rolling with moving forward. And sometimes that might change based on schedule availability. But we we look at this as y'all's podcast. We're just on here pushing the buttons. We love when y'all interact yeah. with us, stay involved with us, and we want to hear what you think about when you would like to receive this podcast if it is only three days a week. So June and July, the two summer months, all Locked On College channels are moving to three days a week. And then once August 1 rolls back around, we're back to our regular five. So if you have a preference of what three days you have, please put them in the comments. We'll consider all of those. Mash that subscribe button, and we will see you all on Monday. Until then, go Pack. Go Pack.